Hello children, hope you all are doing well. In this video, we are going to learn about the first lesson of chemistry, matter and its composition. Before moving on to this lesson, let us have a preliminary idea about what matter is. Of all the objects around the world, some are natural and some are man-made. Example of natural objects are sun, moon, and stars. Example of man-made objects are this bottle, this pencil box. Some are living and some are non-living. Example of living things are we, the human beings, the plants and the animals. The example of non-living things are this toy, this ball. So children, from here we can move on to the basic concept of matter. What is common among all these things? Yes, they all occupy space and they have mass. So, we can move on to matter. What is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. There are two important properties of matter. The first important property of matter is that matter occupies space. Consider this pencil box. If I am keeping it on my palm, the pencil box is occupying some space. So, we can say that matter occupies space. The second important property of matter is that matter has mass. Consider these two balls. This is a plastic ball and this is a cotton ball of almost the same size. But... This plastic ball has more mass than this cotton ball. Clear? So again I am repeating the two important properties of matter are Number one, matter has mass and number two, matter occupies space. Now let us move on to the chemical composition of matter. Matter is made up of extremely small particles called atoms. Consider this paper. I can cut this paper into two equal halves. You can see here, I can cut this paper into two equal halves. Again, I can fold this paper. Again, I can cut this paper. I can keep on doing this till I reach a stage where the paper cannot be divided further. So that tiniest particle that cannot be divided further can be referred to as an atom. So what is an atom? An atom is the smallest unit of matter that exhibit all the properties of matter. Now consider one more example. Here you can see the three red circles and here you can see the three green circles. These three red circles, they represent one kind of atom and these three green circles also represent one kind of atom. Now children, I can make different kind of arrangements using these red and green circles. I can take two red circle along with two green circles. I can make this kind of arrangement or I can take one red circle and one green circle. Or I can take two red circles and one green circle. So from this I can make different kind of arrangements and from here we can move on to the basic concept of molecules. Atoms of the same or the different kind combine to form molecules. So what are molecules? Molecules are a group of two or more atoms bonded together that exhibit all the properties of matter. Now we will be moving on to the three states of matter. What are the three states of matter? The three states of matter are solid, liquid and gas. And children, you have already studied about solid, liquid and gas in your lower classes. You have already studied that solids have a definite shape and a definite volume. Liquids have a definite volume, but they don't have a definite shape, whereas Gases, they neither have a definite shape nor do they have a definite volume. I'm going to learn in details about the properties of the three states of matter. 
the molecules are held differently in solid liquid and gas now we are going to learn two new terms intermolecular space and intermolecular force of attraction the space between the molecules of matter is known as intermolecular space. In this figure, you can see that there exists space between the molecules, which is known as intermolecular space. And the force with which the molecules attract each other is known as intermolecular force of attraction. Now let us move on to the molecular arrangement in case of solids, liquids and gases. In solids, the molecules are very tightly packed and the intramolecular force of attraction is strongest. In gases, the molecules are loosely held and the intramolecular force of attraction is very weak. In liquids, the molecules are not as closely packed as in solids and not as loosely packed as in case of gases. And the intramolecular force of attraction is not as strong as in case of solids. Now let us move on to the properties of solids. In solids, the molecules are very tightly packed and the intramolecular space is least. The position of the molecules is fixed and hence they cannot move. The intramolecular force of attraction is strongest. Solids have a definite shape and a definite volume. Solids cannot be compressed easily. Example of solids are stone, bricks, etc. Now let us move on to the properties of liquids. In liquids, the molecules are less tightly packed and intramolecular space is small as compared to the solids. The position of the molecules as liquids is not fixed. The intramolecular force of attraction is not as strong as in solids. Liquids do not have a definite shape. They take the shape of the container in which they are kept and hence they have a definite volume. Liquids can be compressed to a little extent. Example of liquids are water, milk, petrol, etc. In gases, the molecules are far away from each other and are loosely held. That is, the intramolecular space is maximum. The intramolecular force of attraction is weakest in case of gases. Molecules can move freely in all the directions. They neither have a definite shape nor a definite volume. They can be compressed very easily. Example of gases are hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, etc. Liquids and gases can flow easily and thus they are known as fluids. Now let us move on to the differences between the three states of matter. Solids are rigid whereas the liquids and gases are not rigid. The position of molecules in solids is fixed, whereas in case of liquids and gases, it is not fixed. Solids have a definite shape, whereas the liquids and gases, they do not have a definite shape. Solids and liquids have a definite volume, whereas the gases, they do not have a definite volume. Intramolecular space is least in case of solids, whereas in case of liquids, it is more than solids, but less than gases, whereas it is maximum in case of gases. The molecules are tightly packed in solids, less tightly packed in case of liquids, and very loosely held in case of gases. Solids cannot be compressed easily. Liquids are compressible only to a small extent, whereas the gases are highly compressible. Solids can be stored without a vessel. Liquid needs a vessel for storage, and gases can be stored in closed container only. The intramolecular force of attraction is strongest in case of solids, not very strong in liquids, and weakest in case of gases. Solids cannot flow. Liquids can flow from high to lower level, and gases can flow in all the possible directions. Now let us see an activity which proves that air occupies space. We take a deflated balloon, and the air is blown inside it. We see that the balloon gets inflated. So we can conclude from this experiment that air occupies space. So children, with this video, we finish up with the first lesson of chemistry that is matter and its composition. Thank you.